Good evening, everyone. My name is Felicia Leone Driscoll, and I work at Good Shepherd Montessori School in downtown South Bend. I'm here to share tonight about an, an initiative that we started at our school when we started in 2002, and it's called Land-Based Learning, and as the, our students would call it, Farm School. And um, we believe farms and schools belong together. We now have two farms as part of our school. Many of you know uh, the farmers, they're excellent women. One is Terry Niemeyer out at Bertrand Farm, and the other is Charlotte Wolf down at Prairie Winds. <laughs> Everything at, in our school culture is influenced by the farm. It just can't be helped, and for, for the best. We, our curriculum uh, is obviously influenced by the farm, and also things like nutrition policy and dress code. For instance, nutrition policy means the children actually eat food, which is not the case in most schools. I don't know if you know that. And um, no Lunchables at our school, uh, real food close to the source. And uh, for instance, another uh, policy, dress code. I don't know if you notice this, but girls especially cannot find clothes that they can actually run in at school. They already have little heels and things like that. So we, our dress code is children need to be able to move and get dirty, which is countercultural for, uh, for children nowadays. So what can you learn on a farm? I mean, we had, er, in the early years, we had a parent who said, a doctor actually, but said, um, I'm not sending my kid to school to be a farmer. And I'm thinking, why not? We need farmers. Um, but some of the subjects we, you can learn on the farm, obviously botany, zoology, anatomy and physiology, chemistry out the wazoo. Um, physics, uh, anatomy and physiology, I said that, mathematics, economics, meteorology, get some great storms out there, um, and sex education. It's a real natural place to learn sex education. Um, I can't, I will never forget when my, my fourth grade son came to me and said, Mom, today I was doing um, the, in, the, the pumpkin play, in the pumpkin patch and I noticed what Terry was saying about the stamen and the, you know, on the pumpkin plants, the semen, and then the um, ovary. And I'm thinking, pumpkin ovaries, I can't believe I'm having this conversation. And um, he said, well, you know how they, the pollinators come and move <laughs> the pollen over. And um, <clears throat> I said, yes, I am so glad you're learning this on the farm. It makes <laughs> the birds and bees conversation so much easier. Okay, so the, the values of, of working on the farm, hard work, Cooperation, ingenuity, creativity, and fun uh, are all at play on the farm. Great expanses of time that are not structured by adults. This is uh, an anomaly in children's lives right now. Children are over-scheduled and they are stressed. This is a word they've never used for children before. So we have time for children to build forts. We have time for children to collect leaves and to collect feathers. The land-based curriculum supports so much of the, of the Montessori principle that all life, all learning is connected and that children learn best by discovery and hands-on learning. So on the farm, there are scheduled lessons and then there's what happens. And sometimes what happens is miraculous. The day, I will never forget the day that the praying mantis is hatched. Thousands of fierce-looking um, critters, they were only this big at the time, all over. So when the, ch the children were doing their chores and discovering praying mantises, it was, they will never forget that day. Um, the day the bluebirds showed up, the dramatic thunderstorms that make the barns rattle, uh, the birth of chicks, the death of a favorite horse. The children encounter firsthand the fullness of the life cycle. The farm provides endless opportunities for what Maria Montessori determined were essential needs of children, real meaningful work and um, orientation to reality. All of this without a textbook, hmm, amazing. We live in an age where fundamental human needs like food, water, clothing, shelter, transportation, security are all under scrutiny. Questions like where does our food come from and where is our water source safe and sustainable and are our homes and schools energy efficient? What conditions was this shirt made in? Uh, how do I get from here to there without burning so much carbon? Uh, in what ways are these practices and habits sustainable or not? 
These are precisely the questions that our children ask and engage in every day on the farm and also in the classroom.